So guys, let's talk about some important muscles in the hand, the thinar, the hypothenar, the lumbricals and the interosseae here. Now this picture will help us understand the thinar, hypothenar and lumbricals. Thinar muscles guys, let's start with the thinar muscles. Thinar muscles, obviously they are the muscles of the thumb here. Now there are four thinar muscles out of which I can see three here. This muscle which is present more outside, this muscle here is called as an abductor. pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis, the muscle is abductor pollicis brevis, this helps in the abduction of thumb, so it is an abductor pollicis brevis. The same attachment muscle, the muscle more or less the same attachment but present more medially, present more medially, this muscle is flexor pollicis brevis and there is one more muscle which is present deep to them. Now deep to them, once you separate these two muscles, then only you can appreciate that, I can't see that in there. That muscle will be opponent's pollicis. Not shown here, I'm just writing guys, opponent's pollicis. Opponent's pollicis is more deeply placed. So you cannot see it here. In the superficial dissection, opponent's pollicis cannot be seen here. But the important thing to be remembered from the opponent's pollicis is that out of the thinar muscle, out of all the thinar muscles, only opponent's pollicis is attached is attached to the first metacarpal. The way are, rest of the muscles, they are attached to the phalanges. You can see the abductor, flexor, they are all going to the proximal phalanx. But the muscle opponent's pollicis is attached to the first metacarpal, not to the phalanges, to the metacarpal. And what is the significance here? Because it is attached to the metacarpal, so it can rotate the metacarpal. Opposition movement, for the movement of opposition, you have to rotate the metacarpal and that's why the muscle attached to the metacarpal. Why this fact is important for you? Because if opponent's pollicis is attached to the attached to the first metacarpal, that means that means if the person is having a fracture of the first metacarpal, guys, first metacarpal fracture, first metacarpal fracture is what fracture? That's a Bennett's fracture, base of first metacarpal. That is a Bennett's fracture. So, in case of Bennett's fracture, if they ask you this question, that which thumb movement will be impaired? The thumb movement which is impaired is what? That is the, the opposition of the thumb will be impaired because it is giving attachment to the uh, this opponent's pollicis muscle. Flexor pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis. The common thing about these three muscles, these three muscles are all supplied by the median nerve. All these three muscles are supplied by the median nerve, guys. All these three muscles are supplied by the median nerve. Only one thinar muscle is supplied by the ulnar nerve and that muscle is not present in this group here. That muscle is coming from here, from the palmar aspect and that's adductor pollicis. Let me highlight that muscle for you guys. Look at this muscle coming from the shaft of third metacarpal and running horizontally. So this muscle, the one which I marked, it is having two bellies actually, transverse head, oblique head. We don't have to bother about that. So this muscle is adductor pollicis and adductor pollicis is the only thinar muscle is the only thinar muscle that you can see here is supplied by what now it is supplied by the ulnar nerve it is supplied by the ulnar nerve as a matter of fact guys as a matter of fact adductor pollicis is the last muscle supplied by the ulnar nerve when the ulnar nerve travels from the medial side to lateral side, it, it ends by supplying the adductor pollicis. And for that reason, this muscle is also called as the graveyard of ulnar nerve. This muscle is also called as a graveyard of ulnar nerve because ulnar nerve goes inside this muscle and ends. That's the end of the ulnar nerve inside this muscle. So this is a thinar group guys. This, this what we discussed here is a thinar group or thinar muscle. So we have four thinar muscles as you can see, the four thinar muscles in front of you. Let me just box, put a box around all of them. And out of these four thinar muscles, the important thing is the flexor, the abductor and the opponents, they are supplied by the median nerve. And adductor pollicis is the only muscle in the thinar region supplied by the ulnar nerve, which is an important information here. It is the last muscle supplied by the ulnar nerve, also called as a graveyard of ulnar nerve. Now let me take your attention from here to the hypothenar side. If you look at toward the hypothenar side, we have the same kind of muscle. Hypothenar is also having a muscle which is more outside is abductor. The one which is more inside is flexor and again the deeply placed muscle is opponents. 
So in the hypothenar region, guys, if I talk about the hypothenars here, if you look into hypothenars, then once again you will see this muscle here is an abductor, but obviously they are for little finger. So we call them abductor digiti minimi. This muscle here is the abductor digiti minimi. This muscle here is the flexor digiti minimi. Flexor digiti minimi. See, that's abductor. That's a flexor abductor. Same here. Outer one is abductor. The muscle which is more outside will cause abduction. The muscle which is more inside will cause flexion. So abductor and flexor digiti minimi. Again, the one that I cannot see here is opponent's digiti minimi. Opponent's digiti minimi. And again, same story, guys. Opponent's digiti minimi is the only muscle out of all the hypothenar muscle which will be attached. Attached to which metacarpal? The fifth metacarpal. It will be attached to the fifth metacarpal. That was attached to the first metacarpal, and this one will be attached to the fifth metacarpal because, again, for the movement of opposition, we don't need phalanges. Opposition movement is not done at the phalanges. Opposition movement is done at the metacarpal here. You have to rotate the digit, and that is done by the metacarpal only here. We have four hypothenar muscles, but I can see only three here because one of the hypothenar muscle is subcutaneous, which is not shown here. And that muscle is palmaris brevis. So I can see flexor here. I can see abductor. The deeply placed muscle here, the one which is deeply placed, I cannot see in this, will be op opponent's digit minimi. And the most superficial muscle, which is just underneath the skin, no bony attachment, nothing, not, not a significant muscle. That muscle is called as the palmaris brevis. That muscle is palmaris brevis. Guys, palmaris brevis is just a subcutaneous muscle. Palmaris brevis is just a subcutaneous muscle. So these are the four hypothenars, guys. These are the four hypothenars we have. We have flexor, abductor, opponents, and then there is a palmaris brevis, which is just a subcutaneous muscle. And no question here, all of them are supplied by the ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve is a dominant nerve of hand, so all of them are supplied by the ulnar nerve. All of them are supplied by the ulnar nerve. So this is about something about the thinar muscles and hypothenar muscles and their nerve supply also. Because we, we need about all this because when we'll discuss the clinical questions after that, when we'll look at the ulnar nerve and median nerve, we need to know about all this. Now you can see lumbricals also, guys. In this picture, you can see there are four lumbricals here. This is first lumbrical. Let me just give them L1, L2 like this. This is L1, that is first lumbrical. There is L2, that is second lumbrical. There is L3 and there is L4. You can make out from the picture that first and second lumbricals are unipinnate. Whereas third and fourth lumbricals, they are coming from both the side of tendon, they are bipinnate here. So a little note about the lumbricals. Let me write here only. The lumbricals, we have four lumbricals. L1, L2, L3, and L4. First of all, guys, lumbricals origin. Lumbricals origin is from the FDP tendon, flexor digitorum profundus tendon. It's not from the flexor digitorum superficially. This is superficially. This is coming from the tendon deep to it. So flexor digitorum profundus. FDP tendon is the origin for lumbrical muscles. First and second lumbrical, L1 and L2. First and second lumbricals, we said they are unipinnate. Third and fourth lumbricals, they are bipinnate. The unipinnate lumbricals, they are supplied by the, once again, median nerve. And the bipinnate lumbricals, they are supplied by the ulnar nerve. So first and second, the lateral two lumbrical, the one which is toward the thumb, the lateral two lumbrical, the first and second lumbrical are supplied by median nerve. And third and fourth lumbrical, they are supplied by the Ulnar nerve. So lumbricals are 2, 2. It's like 2 by ulnar, 2 by median nerve. Function of lumbrical, guys. Lumbrical muscle actually, they, they turn. Lumbrical muscle after the metacarpophalangeal joint, they turn and go backward. So they originate on the tendon in front, flexor digitorum profundus. But lumbrical muscle, they turn backward and insert on the tendon behind, on the extensor tendon. 
and because they insert on the extensor tendon so they have a different function because these muscles start from the palmar aspect and they go to the dorsal aspect that's why these muscles cause the flexion at metacarpophalangeal joint but because they are behind the interphalangeal joint so they cause extension there so that function that we discussed earlier in the clump case fallacy also that the function of intrinsic muscle one the function of lumbrical is to cause the flexion the function of lumbrical is to cause the flexion at mcp joint metacarpophalangeal joint because it is passing in front of the mcp joint so it causes flexion at mcp and extension at interphalangeal joints guys it causes extension at the interphalangeal joint flexion at metacarpophalangeal and extension at the interphalangeal joint that's the function of the lumbricals so that's the three group muscle in fact these are like uh, out of 20 muscles these are the eight uh, 12 muscles we are looking at four thinars four hypothenars four lumbricals there are 20 muscles in hand and these are the 12 muscle that you're looking at four in the thinar four in the hypothenar region and then we have four lumbricals now finally coming to the interosseous guys undoubtedly out of the intrinsic muscle that's the most important part here for sure now these muscles are interosseous interosseous guys interosseous between the bones now this here is a palmar interosseous and these here are the dorsal interosseous so we have interosseous we have palmar interosseous and we have a dorsal interosseous here as you can see in this image here all the palmar interosseous as you can make out from here they are all unipinnate here so palmar interosseous are unipinnate in nature and dorsal interosseous are bipinnate in nature the unipinnate and bipinnate see think of a function guys we all know this mnemonic pad and dab we know palmar interosseous is for adduction pad so if this middle finger is a principal digit here the function of palmar interosseous is to bring the other finger close to the middle finger like this and dorsal interosseous is for abduction dab that means the function of dorsal interosseous is to take the other fingers away from the middle finger just just understand the logics behind in here so palmar interosseous is for adduction and the dorsal interosseous is for the abduction here palmar interosseous is for adduction and then therefore you can see the first palmar interosseous it is going to the thumb second palmar interosseous is going to the index finger because they need to pull these two fingers to close to the middle finger here third palmar interosseous is going to the ring finger and the fourth is going to the little finger which tells me the digit which is not having palmar interosseous is which one is a middle finger and that's a question also which finger is devoid of the palmar interosseous this is the one so palmar interosseous is absent on which finger on the middle finger the first and second goes to these two digits so that they can bring it close the third and fourth goes to these two digits so that they can bring it close to the middle here so there is no palmar interosseous on the middle finger but when you compare it with the dorsal interosseous guys dorsal interosseous for abduction now first of all as you can see all the dorsal interosseous bipinnate here dorsal interosseous for abduction see which which digit do not require an abductor it's the thumb and the little finger we just discussed thumb is having a muscle called as abductor pollicis guys this so we already have a abductor for thumb and we also have abductor for little finger called as abductor digiti minimi isn't it we just saw these muscles here we have a abductor pollicis and we also have abductor digiti minimi so we already have a abductor for thumb and abductor for little finger and that's why the dorsal interosseous is absent on the thumb and the little finger if you look at the tendons here the first dorsal interosseous is going behind the index finger the last dorsal interosseous d4 i'm writing is going behind the ring finger and d2 and d3 second and third dorsal interosseous both are going behind the middle finger here so first of all it's the thumb and little finger which are devoid of dorsal interosseous here these are devoid of dorsal interosseous and there's another question here that middle finger is having two dorsal interosseous the second and third both are going behind the middle finger so there's a question on the middle finger here that middle finger is having a double dorsal interosseous double dorsal interosseous here 
So these are some important facts that you have to remember about the interosia here. So there are interosia, palmar interosia is absent on the middle finger, the action of palmar interosia is adduction. Dorsal interosia is ab absent on the little finger and the thumb and the middle finger is having a double dorsal interosia here. And they, they can convert this question to clinical question, like they, once they ask this question that a patient is having a, 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 a carpenter suffer a crushing injury. So there is a crushing injury of the little finger of a person, then which of the following muscle will be spared? If there is a crushing injury of the little finger, you know that little finger is not having what muscle? Dorsal interosia. So that was the answer, that which muscle is not spa which is spared? The muscle which is not present on the little finger and that is dorsal interosia. So thumb and little finger, no dorsal interosia, middle finger, no palmar interosia and middle finger is having a double dorsal interosia. We have two dorsal interosia in it here. And guys, be it palmar interosia, dorsal interosia, all the interosia, all interosia are supplied by the ulnar nerve. The dominant nerve of the hand is going to supply all interosia. If I just quickly recap the nerve supply for you from the ulnar nerve point of view, in the thinar compartment, it was supplying one muscle, adductor pollicis. We said one adductor, one thinar muscle is supplied by ulnar nerve. The last muscle supplied by ulnar nerve is adductor pollicis. Then all the hypothenar muscles are supplied by ulnar nerve, no confusion. Lumbricals guys, L1, L2, L3, L4. L3, L4, the medial lumbrical, the one which is toward the ulnar side are supplied by ulnar nerve. And when it comes to interosci, well, all of them, all palmar interosci, all dorsal interosci, they're all supplied by the ulnar nerve. All of them are supplied by the ulnar nerve. They even asked this question, I'm sure you all read this in the ortho and all guys, the card test. You know what is a card test? When you put, when you place a card between the finger and you ask the patient to hold the card and you try to pull it out. And that card test is done to check the adduction power of the finger. Adduction is done by which muscle? The palmar interosci. So this muscle is tested by what test? The card test. Palmar interosci is tested by the card test. So this is about the the 20 muscles in hand guys, 4 thinars, 4 hypothenars, 4 lumbricals, 4 palmar interosia and 4 dorsal interosia, 4 dorsal interosia.